everyone. Hello, brothers and sisters. Welcome to the English worship. As we prepare to learn more about the Holy Spirit, uh, why don't we take some time to quiet down our hearts um, so that we can really listen to what the Holy Spirit is trying to tell us today, uh, whether through song, through the message, um, or just even prompting in our own hearts. Let's pray together. Father, just thank you so much um, that through all of this, through um, ups and downs of this year, Lord, uh, that you are still with us, uh, whether we can see you or not. And Lord, uh, you've placed the Holy Spirit in us to prompt us, to guide us, to lead us um, closer to you, Lord. We ask that you just really work in our hearts and our minds to really draw closer to you. Um, and but most importantly, Lord, that we would quiet our own um, just thoughts and just hear carefully what you want to tell us, Lord, in that still, small, and quiet voice. We pray this all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I come to you, let my heart be changed, renewed, flowing from the grace that I found in you. Lord, I've come to know the weaknesses I see in me.
to your side. 
I will soar with you. Your spirit leads me on in the power of your love. And I will soar with you. Your spirit leads me on in the power of your love. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Praise God that we can worship online together on this Sunday morning. I'd like to dedicate the following time to pray for our country as well as the need of the church. Let's bow and have a word of prayer together. Father, thank you. Thank you for loving us. And thank you for your promise that your loving kindness and your mercies are new every morning, and great is your faithfulness. And Father, thank you for carrying us through the year 2020. And as we're stepping into 2021, we have full confidence that you have begun the good work in us and will be faithful to complete it. And Father, you're good all the time. Father, thank you. I'd like to pray for our country especially during this transition of leadership. And Father, we know that there may be glitches here and there, but Father, we know that you are still in control and we have confidence in you because you are good all the time. And Father, we pray also for the pandemic situation, not only for our country, but also for the world, uh, that you will control the pandemic and uh, through the vaccine, uh, you will um, bring protection uh, to people all around the world. And Father, we pray especially for the effectiveness and the supply of the vaccine. And also, Father, we pray that uh, this could be an opportunity for people to think about their life. Think about life, think about death, think about eternity, think about having God, having Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. And Father, we uh, pray that this crisis could become an opportunity for the gospel. And Father, we also would like to uh, pray for the ministry of the church, especially for the fellowships and small groups. Uh, pray for the leaders. Pray that uh, you continue to bless us um, and help us draw a close relationship. Uh, draw closer to you and have uh, develop a, a closer relationship with you. Uh, and really as a leader of our flocks. And Father, we pray for the development of the ministry, pray especially for the outreach and evangelistic effort, especially during the Chinese New Year, uh, knowing that uh, various groups have different activities, uh, programs. And Father, may your words uh, be shared uh, among the community, among uh, the different people. And Father, thank you again for this opportunity to worship you. And may your name be honored. May you enjoy our worship. And may we be humble enough to listen to your words and put that into practice. And Father, thank you. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, I want to ask you, what kind of birds are these? Anyone know? Yeah, prairie chicken. And you know, don't they look like eagles? Yeah, I remember uh, a story. Actually, I think uh, uh, American, uh, Native American folktale. Uh, it's about a man. Somehow, um, he found an egg, but not knowing what kind of egg it is. Actually, it is an the egg of an eagle. But he didn't know, and he looked around and saw some prairie chickens there, and then uh, so he took it over there, and then saw a nest, and then put it in there. Now, 
the mother hen came back and then uh, look at it. Oh, yo, okay, my eggs, and trying to hatch the eggs, not realizing that there is an ego egg in there. But as uh, the, the mother prairie chicken uh, trying to hatch the eggs, and then one by one, then the little chicks come out along with this ego. And then the ego grew up without knowing that. He was an ego. He thought that uh, he was a pretty chicken. Then, then so uh, all the activities. Then they have together, and he thought that he was a chicken. So uh, he scratched the soil, trying to pack and find um, the seeds and find the worms to eat or insects. Uh, and as they flutter their wings and trying to fly, uh, like maybe a foot or two feet above the ground for a few feet, then you know, like this ego is still flapping the wing and doing the same thing. Uh, and even like bark, 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 learning to uh, cluck and uh, cackle, just like the prairie chicken. Because he thought that he was a prairie chicken. And one day, as he heard some noise up there in the sky, he looked up and then saw a beautiful, majestic bird flying over the clouds. And then he asked, what is this bird? So majestic, so beautiful. And then the prairie chicken next to him said, wow, you don't know? This is an ego, the chief of the birds. Uh, but you can never be like him. You are just like the rest of us. We are prairie, prairie chickens. Um, and like this ego, spent his whole life just looking up the sky, admiring these mighty eagles, flying, soaring up high here and there, without knowing that actually he was one of them. And finally, after many years, he died, still thinking that he was a prairie chicken. As I heard the story, I said, oh, so sad. You know, the ego didn't even know that he was an ego and then died like a prairie chicken. As I think about our Christian life, at times, we may be like this ego. We thought that, oh, you know, we are powerless. We couldn't do much. We can never fly. We can never soar on high. So we just live our life like a prairie chicken. Just pack on the soil, trying to find seeds and insects to eat without knowing that we are powerful. And in fact, Christians, we have the power of the Holy Spirit in us. It's not that we are powerless, but maybe at times we never got plugged in, plugged into the power of the Holy Spirit. And today we are going to learn about the third person of the triune God, the Holy Spirit. And what we are trying to do is to first understand the ministry of the Holy Spirit and see in what way that we can partner with the Holy Spirit so that we could live a powerful and God-honoring life as we continue to rely on the Holy Spirit. The passage that we have is the Gospel of John, chapter 16, verse 7 to 15. And how about this? Let's read it together and uh, we have the brothers read the odd verses and then the sisters read the even verses. Verse 7, brothers. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Verse 8. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father and you will see me no longer. Concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. 
When the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all the truth, for He will not speak on His own authority, but whatever He hears, He will speak, and He will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify Me, for He will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore, I said that He will take what is mine and declare it to you. Well, the sermon title today is Partner with the Holy Spirit. Why did I choose this sermon title? It's because we know that the Holy Spirit has this ministry. But like what we said, we need to plug in to the power of the Holy Spirit to partner with Him so that we can live a Spirit-filled life. And today, let's first look at the ministry of the Holy Spirit and see how we can work together and we can partner with Him. Let's look at verse 7. It says, If I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send Him to you. In fact, the word Helper uh, in the U, uh, ESV, uh, is the Greek word uh, parakletos. The parakletos is actually uh, the word, the root word of uh, paraclete. And paraclete is the, another name for the Holy Spirit. But uh, the word, uh, this root word, the meaning is call alongside, or a comforter, or an advocate. So it's been translated uh, in different words, uh, different English words. And in fact, each word uh, has the, um, the meaning there. Um, you know, parakletos meaning uh, calling alongside, but it also has that uh, nuance, the meaning of uh, being a comforter or like the middle person, an advocate. That reminds me of uh, a story of um, the Bible translator. There was a group of Bible translators trying to go to Central Africa to translate the Kari language. Uh, it is very difficult because, uh, especially on the concept of the paraclete, um, the Holy Spirit, they didn't know uh, what is equivalent to the Holy Spirit in their culture uh, and how they can represent the Holy Spirit in their language. And at this group of translators, there one day uh, they saw a troop or um, a group of people, um, they, the, the, the porters, they trying to carry things like on their head and their bundles on their head that they um, form a row and march into the bushes. Uh, as they, the translators saw these porters uh, going into the bushes, they found that, oh, wow, there was one person who didn't have to do anything, um, no bundle on the head, uh, don't have to carry anything, but he was just walking alongside with the group of porters. Uh, so the translator thought that, oh, uh, this group, uh, this person must be the boss and make sure that, oh, you know, don't be lazy and uh, just have an eye over the group of porters. But no, actually that's not what he was. Uh, they found that this person has a particular or special job, a task. It is uh, that when anyone falls over with exhaustion, uh, they just just too tired to uh, take care of the bundle on their head. So this person will come alongside them and take it over and help them to carry their burden. And in the Kari language, and this person is called the one who falls down beside us. So the translator at this point find the right word for the word paraclete. Holy Spirit is the person who falls down beside us in the Kari language. I think it's a very good translation. It talk about the, the characteristic of the ministry of the Holy Spirit is always supporting us, lifting us up, and comforting us. Uh, I want to point you to uh, Romans chapter 8, 
verse 26 and 27. 26, it says, Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. At times we are weak, but when we are weak, the Holy Spirit, is just like this uh, porter, uh, when they are tired with exhaustion, then there's another person who falls down for them and come and take the burden. And in fact, the word helps is a present tense, a meaning that uh, keep on helping, you know, though we are weak, but the Holy Spirit keep on helping us. And it says the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. Um, not that uh, with a very prideful attitude and say, oh, you have problem? Oh, I pray for you. I'll intercede for you. But look at the description. Intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. With empathy. Praying for us. Feeling for us. Interceding for us. So when we say partner with the Holy Spirit, First, we have to understand, oh, one of the many ministry of the Holy Spirit is that the Holy Spirit is to comfort believers, help us, comfort us, partner with us. But in what way that we can partner with Him in this ministry? How should we respond to Him? Remember, we've been saying that the Holy Spirit walk alongside us, uh, empathizes with us, and pray for us and comfort us. And if the Holy Spirit cares so much of how we feel, I think we too should connect with Him emotionally and trying to understand Him and feel for Him. So that will lead us into another passage, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. And it says, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. And with the context of this verse, it's been talking about, uh, Paul was talking about uh, how Christians should um, get rid of the old self, the old behaviors, the sinful uh, acts, and they need to live a new life. If not, then they will be grieving the Holy Spirit. So, in what way that we can partner with the Holy Spirit? Since one of His ministry is to comfort believers, and we too should care about and connect with Him emotionally and try not to grieve the Holy Spirit by living a life uh, that is worthy of our calling, uh, a new way of living. And when you look at verse 8, it says, And when He comes, He will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Now, because of our sin, and the Holy Spirit is prompting, is convicting us inside and saying that, hey, you shouldn't be doing that. I don't know whether you ever have that experience. Before you try to sin, maybe cheat on the test, or maybe lie, maybe have some evil, unclean thoughts, then you feel, oh, you know, I shouldn't be doing that. Oh, stop. Or maybe even after doing that, you feel guilty because the Holy Spirit is causing ourselves to convict ourselves. And because of God's righteousness, oh, we're so sinful, because God is righteous, then again, we got convicted. And because of the judgment, the future judgment, then we got convicted. So the Holy Spirit is prompting in us and saying that, you know, like because of sin, because of God's righteousness, because of the future judgment, you shouldn't be doing what you should not do. The second um, ministry of the Holy Spirit besides comforting believer, is to convict the world. And just like in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19 to 20, uh, there is a response uh, that if 
The world is being convicted by the Holy Spirit. So how should we respond to the Holy Spirit's conviction? 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19 and 20, it says, Do not quench the Spirit. Do not despise prophecy. The word quench uh, actually means snuff out, uh, like a candle. You know, sometimes, guys, we like to, you know, when the burning candle, you just... Uh, and then it doesn't hurt too much if you let go early enough snuffing out, uh, quenching. It's just like the Holy Spirit is prompting in us and then somehow we ignore it and then snuffed out, quenched. I don't know whether you ever have that experience. Um, 2021, you make a decision, you make a commitment and you say, oh, I'm going to do devotion every day. Um, and that is the prompting of the Holy Spirit. It's convicting you and but you know when you get up early in the morning and then you find oh you know there are some taxes uh, that text that I need to uh, respond and you respond to the text and then and somehow you see like a link and you go to the link you watch this video you watch the other video and then another like um, message from someone else then you got distracted and you say well you know maybe I'll do it later after breakfast after breakfast, then you have so many things to do, and then the oh, maybe I should read the Bible, but you know, maybe later you quench the spirit. Likewise, like some of us, um, we have parents that they are not believers, and then we get convicted and say, you know, we need to share the gospel with them, um, especially in light of what is happening in the world, uh, life is brief, and we need to grab hold of opportunity. And the pastor always been preaching about that. You know, I need to do that. But as you get up in the morning, you got into a fight with your parents. And then you say, oh, I give up. I can never get through them. You know, forget it. <sniffs> Quench the spirit. Or maybe you, you offended your parents. Or you offended your spouse. Uh, you say, oh, you know, I should apologize. Uh, but, you know, how could I apologize? Uh, maybe I'll just say hi and then um, trying to cut the, an orange and then, oh, okay, yeah, eat fruits. Uh, okay, yeah. And, and that's about it. And then even though you have that prompting of the Holy Spirit, but you snuff it out. You quench it. But it says, do not quench the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's ministry is to convict the world. And so our response is not to quench the Spirit. In verse 13, it says, When the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all the truth. For He will not speak on His own authority, but whatever He hears, He will speak. And He will declare to you the things that are to come. In verse 14, He will glorify me, for He will take what is mine and declare it to you. Verse 15, All that the Father has is mine. Therefore I said that He will take what is mine and declare it to you. Keep on saying, uh, guiding you into the truth, declare to you, declare it to you, declare it to you. So, another ministry of the Holy Spirit is to reveal the truth to us. And that is very straightforward. You know, as we read the Bible, we may not understand it, but you know, as we read a little bit with a prayerful attitude, then ding, oh, suddenly we realize, oh, I understand. I know how to apply it to my life. How then should we respond to this ministry and partner with the Holy Spirit? Galatians 5, Verse 16 and verse 25, it says, actually, the whole paragraph is talking about walking by the Spirit, keeping in step with the Holy Spirit. And verse 16, it says, But I say, walk by the Spirit or live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desire of the flesh. Verse 25, it says, If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. In fact, the phrase keep in step 
is it's like talking about the soldiers, like marching, proceeding in a row, and that is keeping in step, like following the Holy Spirit. I remember watching a movie, but I, I can't remember the name of the movie. Um, it's talking about like, you no, know, it's like war movie. Uh, and then like so many of the soldiers are running away from the enemies and the enemies were pursuing them. And as they reach to a field, and, but they know that this is a mind field. Uh, but they didn't have enough time to uh, really check on you know, where the landmines are or like to um, somehow ignite the landmine or just make it explode. And they didn't have time because the enemies, they were coming and they didn't know what to do. And many of them got crazy. Oh, you know, we're going to die. We're going to die. What are we supposed to do? And in fact, one of the soldiers really got crazy. And then he just, ah, and then ran across the field. Ah! Got him crazy. But miraculously, he didn't touch any of the landmines. You know what happened? All his teammates, they just walked carefully right on the spot of the footprints, one step at a time, one by one, one by one, and all of them passed through this mind view. And this is like walking, keeping in step with one another. And likewise, when we um, say we need to keep in step with the Spirit, then we need to follow the guidance, the leading of the Spirit. As we said, um, how we partner with the Holy Spirit one of his ministries is to reveal the truth, but how should we respond? Is to keep in step with the Spirit. It's pretty much like um, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. It says, Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. Actually, filling with the Holy Spirit um, is not having very miraculous deeds or anything, but just like, you know, look at the comparison. Do not get drunk with wine. Meaning, do not be controlled by wine, because like when you got drunk with wine, you wouldn't know what you're doing, and then actually your whole person are being controlled by the alcohol, because you're drunk. Now, don't get drunk with wine, but get drunk with the Holy Spirit, actually meaning that you are being controlled by the Holy Spirit. That I'm supposed to go this way? No, but the Holy Spirit tell me to go that way. So I follow the footstep or the direction, uh, react to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Okay, let's look at the last one. Uh, the last ministry, actually uh, there are many ministry um, or characteristic of the Holy Spirit. We wouldn't have enough time to talk about, but you know, we already talked about three of them uh, in this passage of the Gospel of John. But this another one is very straightforward and everybody know about it already. Uh, one of the passages in Acts 1.8. And it says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Holy Spirit has power. And yeah, that's true. You know, remember that when the Holy Spirit first came, he empowered the apostles. And then Peter preached, and 3,000 people came to Christ. 3,000, just in one preaching, because Peter was empowered by the Holy Spirit. And as we read on in different um, passages, talk about the Holy Spirit give gifts to us and there are various spiritual gifts so we know that oh we can rely on god's power we can rely on the power of the holy spirit and the gifts that is given by the holy spirit so as we are talking about partnering partnering with the holy spirit first is that we know his ministry he 
comfort believers, so do not grieve the Spirit. He convicts the world, do not quench the Spirit. He reveals the truth, so keep in step with the Spirit. And now He bestows power. So what should we do? Like what it says here. Remember the saying, with great power comes great responsibility. And it may bring you to, oh, Spider-Man. But actually, um, many people, many famous people has quoted or has alluded to this concept of great power comes great, with great powers comes great responsibility. In fact, Winston uh, Churchill and uh, also President Theodore Roosevelt, uh, President Franklin D. Roosevelt, they all talk about this concept. But of course, it got popular, uh, popularized by the comic Spider-Man. Um, but do you know where did this principle or this idea, concept, come from? Any guess? Originally, from Jesus Christ. Yeah, let's look at the Gospel of Luke, chapter 12, verse 48. And it says, Everyone to whom much was given of him, much will be required. And from him to whom they entrusted much, they will demand the more. So it is talking about, you know, if you're given more, you require to give more. And then if entrusted to you more, then you will be demanded. Uh, more will be demanded from you. So if God is going to give us power through the Holy Spirit, just like in verse 1, 8, it didn't stop there. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit was come upon you. That's it. No. And it says, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Yeah, power is given, but we need to respond with action. Now, how should we respond with action? Uh, like if we are entrusted with the power of the Holy Spirit, and we know that, yeah, this is the power that can raise the dead. They can perform miracles. And then, you know, what are we going to do with this power? Oh, of course, we need to show off. Uh, yeah, you know, see, you know, uh, I have this power. So, you know, you try to do this and do that and say, you know, I'm powerful. No, you know, we are not putting up a show. It's not like, oh, you know, I have power. Uh, yeah, I can so high. So, you know, I will perform like the blue angels and you know, flying high this way vertically flying upside down uh, you know flying one uh, across the other one and no when we have the power first peter chapter 4 verse 10 tell us how we can partner with the holy spirit and respond to his empowerment it says as each has received a gift no, this is the gift from the Holy Spirit. Use it to serve one another as good steward of God's varied grace. When we have God's power, we need to serve one another. You say, oh, you know, this is how we are going to use God's power? Yeah, like Jesus. Is Jesus powerful? Of course. But remember, he humbled himself as a servant and he washed the disciples' feet. And likewise, you know, when we have God's power, we need to serve one another. So what we've learned today, we say we need to partner with the Holy Spirit. Yes, the Holy Spirit comfort believers and so we should respond by not grieving the holy spirit just imagine he comforted me and i grieve him it's ridiculous no he comforted me so do not grieve the holy spirit by doing what is not right and he convicts the world so we should not quench the holy spirit we should listen to the prompting of the Holy Spirit, 
no matter how soft his voice is. But we need to pay attention and not to snuff it out. And also, he reveals the truth to us. So you know, as we read the Bible, we may understand what God is trying to tell us. So we need to keep in step with the Spirit. Follow Him. Follow His guidance. Be in control, filled with the Spirit, controlled by Him. And also, He bestows power. So we need to use this power to serve one another and to serve in the kingdom. Maybe let's think of, um, there are a couple of, question or a couple of reflection uh, that we could uh, try to meditate on. The first one is reflect and see in what ways that you have grieved or quenched the Holy Spirit. Come before Him and ask for forgiveness and determine to improve these areas in the coming weeks. And also try to reflect and see in what areas that you need to be controlled by the Holy Spirit and follow His leading. And in the coming weeks, try to pay attention to and follow His prompting. Maybe you can just pick one for now. Um, maybe I say, well, you know, I'm, I pretty much you know, at times grieve and quench the Holy Spirit. Then you think of in what ways that you've been doing that. Uh, is it, does it become a routine, uh, a pattern? Come before Him and ask for forgiveness and determine to improve in these areas. Or maybe if you feel that you, you are pretty much your own boss, you are not controlled by the Holy Spirit, you did not follow His guidance, His leading, and then not follow His um, prompting and then just like to go your own way and not going His way, then Maybe pay attention to his prompting and trying to follow God that way. How about let's take uh, some time, uh, maybe just a, a minute or so, um, to bow before him and uh, to meditate on one of these questions. Whether it is grieving or quenching the Holy Spirit or whether you want to yield your control to him. Come before Him, talk to Him. Ask Him for His forgiveness. Ask Him for His empowerment. Make a commitment before Him to change. Father, thank you. Thank you for revealing yourself to us. Revealing the ministry of the Holy Spirit to us so that we could respond accordingly. And Father, we have confidence that you have heard our prayer. And you know what is in our mind and in our hearts. And Father, we pray for your empowerment as we determine to follow you to do the right thing, to turn away from our faults. And Father, we pray that you, as you have promised, send the Holy Spirit to walk alongside us and to carry us on. And Father, thank you. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.
in his time he makes all things beautiful in his time Lord please show Welcome all of you to join us in the online worship service. Uh, I'd like to connect with you if you are new um, uh, to worship together with us. Uh, please go on to our website and uh, we want to uh, get connected with you so that we can uh, get to know you a little bit more and uh, invite you to some of our programs. Uh, we have uh, good news. Uh, it's congratulations to Dan and Carol Lang. Uh, they are from the San Francisco 11 o'clock Cantonese congregation. Uh, Carol just gave birth to a baby girl, Emma Grace, on January 14. And she's 6 pounds and 19 inches long. And may God continue to bless his family. In 2021 Pledge Information Update, uh, the General Fund we have already um, got 54% uh, of the pledge goal. Um, so, you know, like a little bit over 50%, but it's still a long way to go. I'll just give you some idea. Uh, last year, we have 356 pledge cards, meaning 356 family pledged. Uh, and this year, uh, up to this point, we only have 206 pledges, uh, meaning 150 pledges less than last year, like 150 family less than last year. So we need your prayer support. Continue to pray for the pledging for the budget this year. And if you haven't pledged yet, or if you know of uh, anyone is not convenient in pledging online, they may need a physical pledge card. Please let the office know. A mission pledges, we have met 61% of the pledge goal. Um, if you um, want to pledge, uh, right now it's not too late. You can do it electronically, um, do it online. Or if you need a physical pledge card, you can inform the office. Uh, Bible Connect. Tuesday, uh, January 26 is our next Bible Connect time. Um, so we'll meet at 8 p.m. Uh, we try to connect with each other, with God and with His Word uh, as we explore Psalm 119 this time. Okay, the Zoom information will be in the weekly email and so, or you can uh, email Pastor Tim uh, to get the detailed information. Okay, now is the time uh, for us to close today's worship service. And again, welcome all of you and may God uh, bless you uh, in this coming week as you go to face the various challenges. And I'd like to close us in a word of prayer. Father, thank you. Thank you for blessing us with this worship service. 
Uh, thank you and praise God that we can still sing praises to you. We can still pray to you. We can still listen to your words. And may we carry what we have learned, what we have got uh, in this worship service. Uh, and so that what we have learned can sustain us to face the various challenges ahead. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, may the love of our Father, and may the communion of the Spirit be with us from now till the day that we meet the Lord. Amen. Okay, I'd like to uh, um, see you next week, and may God bless you. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.